Rise to your feet and shout hallelujah. If you know that your heaven has started right here on earth, shout hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are grateful to you for your mercy. Thank you for the salvation you brought for us. Great burden bearer of the universe. Take over every burden here tonight. Every trouble, every weight, every tragedy, every sorrow, every distress, every sickness, every disease, every bad habit, every wickedness, every pain, every lack, every shame that your people bring to you tonight. Take it over, Lord. And give everyone rest. Rest from every heavy load. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. I pray that tonight nobody will go home with his load or burden of sorrow in the name of Jesus. Can you say with your own mouth, I will not go back home with any burden. Please, okay, you are not serious about it. Can you tell somebody by your side, you won't go back home with any burden. All right, stand up and tell three people, I will not go back home with any burden in my heart. Tell three people, I will not go back by the grace of God. Amen. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus name. There is only one man that can open his mouth and his hands. And welcome anybody in the world and in the universe. To come with his problem. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. No scientist. No president. No prophet. No governor. No rich man. No poor man. No king. No ruler. Can open his mouth. And say to every man on earth. Come with your problem. I will solve every problem. Immediately he says so, his own problem will show up and overwhelm him. But Jesus came on earth. He entered into a village. By the time he left that village, there was not a single pe person left in sickness. He went to the temple, drove out all the money changers, and they brought in the maimed, the blind, the lame, the crippled, the suffering, he healed everyone. What kind of a man is this? He answered every question. Zacchaeus, the rich tax collector, came to Jesus with his guilt and shame, with his unclean money and stigma, with anxiety of salvation. In St. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, he was overwhelmed and heavily weighed down by these loads of shame. But the day he met Jesus, salvation entered his house. Today you will have an encounter with Jesus. <laughs> Ten lepers came out of the lepers' colony. They heard of what Jesus was doing. Think of it, leprosy is not a disease that anybody likes to have. Fingers are cut. No more sensation. There's stench everywhere. 
There is fluid everywhere. They are rejected. They are outcasts. The ten lepers were heavily weighed down with the burden of stigma of leprosy, penury, and abandonment, misery, and feeling of worthlessness. Nobody had value for them in life. But when they met Jesus, in St. Luke chapter 17, from verse 1 to 10, their story changed. Your story will change today. Nicodemus was a good man, honest, God fearing man, already over 70, very aged. But he had one fear the fear of how will he be sure that he will make it to the kingdom of God. And there are some of you now that are listening to me, and you know you are close to death, but you don't have assurance of acceptance with God. The day Nicodemus met Jesus, and he spoke to him, that day Nicodemus believed that Jesus is the Son of God. His fear was taken away. Later in, this, in the gospel, we found that Nicodemus was one of the men that defended Jesus in the presence of the Pharisees, and he was one of the men that did his burial. Nicodemus had an encounter with Jesus, and his fear of going to hell vanished. Today, you will receive an encounter. And when you die, you will not go to hell. What is your burden that Jesus wants? Whatever you are worried about or troubled about is your burden, is your load. You are troubled about your career or business. You are worried about your family or marriage. You are worried about your ministry or life. You are worried about a court case or a land matter. You are worried about your health, about your future. Then you have a load. Whatever torments you or afflicts you is a load. Whatever distresses you or troubles you or terrifies you is a load. Whatever makes you to sigh aloud and say, hmm, is an indication that you are carrying a load. Whatever you remember and you are not able to sleep is a load. Whatever robs you of excitement, when you remember it and you are eating, you lose appetite. It is a load. Whatever depresses you and makes you sad and unhappy is a load. Whatever wants to make you commit suicide that makes you think of it's better to die now. You have a load. Whatever is chasing you that you are running into hiding, you have a load. Whatever makes you to drop your head in shame is a load. Poverty is a load. Failure is a load. It brings shame, it brings poverty, it brings frustration. Incurable sickness is a load. Disease is a load. Madness, mental illness is a load addiction to drugs to alcohol to gambling is a load because many times after you have indulged yourself you are sad you are sad you are unhappy with yourself it is a load anything you do not want and you find yourself doing it is a load the good news there's somebody ready to take that load from you. Are you ready to give up your load? Let me hear you say, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm going to tell you four steps. And if you follow those four steps, you will not go home with any load. Can I hear three powerful amen? Every disobedience and transgression gives birth to a load. Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 19 they disobeyed God and ate 
and they started carrying load. From the moment the earth, the scripture says, in verse 8, she took of the fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband and he ate. Then their eyes opened and they saw that they were naked. From that time, their body started. They were naked, stripped of glory and covering. Embarrassingly naked. They started looking for leaves to cover. The body of hiding. The body of fear and self-condemnation. Guilt. Fear of judgment. Fear of rejection. That was the beginning of load in the life of man. Then God came and he looked at the woman. Say, your pain has just started. Torment and affliction. He looked at the man. He said, the ground is cursed. Cursed ground became a load. Breeding cursed food. He said, your labor is cursed. Your productivity is cursed. Then the cause of mortality, death. Apart from this sin imposed loads and burdens, there are self imposed burdens. And there are enemy imposed burdens. And there is heritage imposed burden. Noah mistakenly got drunk. Because he had been drinking little by little, then one day it overpowered him. And he was naked. And his son, his second son, saw him naked and laughed and took him to social media. Called his brothers and said, Come and see, oh, the old man is naked. His two brothers will not look at their father's nakedness. They took their garment and went backward and covered him. Noah woke up from his alcohol and slammed a curse on Ham. Rather than cursing Ham directly, he placed it on his, on his grandson, Canaan. Genesis chapter 9, verse 24 25. He said, He shall be a servant of servants. And there are some of us carrying load of curses. That have been existing in the family before we were born. Today, Jesus will take off that load. <laughs> what of self imposed loads in Judges chapter 16, verse 17 to 21? Uh, Judges, Samson went after a prostitute, disobeyed God, and revealed his secrets. He became blind. He was defeated. He became ashamed. That is self-imposed. I pray for you today. All the mistakes you made in past that has brought your trouble. Today, the burden bearer will take it out. We have enemy-imposed burdens. Joseph was a young, honest, promising man with great star. But his brothers turned out to be his enemies and they sold him into slavery. Slavery. From slavery he went into prison. Every burden that the enemy has put on you, today Jesus will take it off. Then we have examples of demon imposed burden. Like the demon, like the man of Gadara, the madman of Gadara. 6,000 demons sat on his head. Made his life bitter and shameful. But an encounter with Jesus set him free. You were a shining star. Growing up, you used to be a high, you know, a brilliant person. Everything you did succeeded. Until sometime, something happened. You cannot explain what happened. You started becoming a failure. Your progress was blocked. Your speed was reduced. Or replace sound judgment. You face rejection everywhere. No more favor. Demotion replaces promotion. Stagnation replaces progress. Failure replaces success. Because an enemy imposed a load on you. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have gone over looking for help. Today, 
that load will be taken away from you. Four steps. When you repent, you believe, you connect with Jesus, you stop worrying, you start praising him. You will not go home with any load. You are looking for a way out. Stop going to native doctors. They cannot help themselves. No rich man can take over your load. Whatever they give you might give you a temporary solution. But every temporary solution comes at a terrible price. But I introduce to you Jesus. The only one capable of bearing every burden. He is Jesus. He triumphed over sin, Satan, and death. The only man that never committed sin. The only man and name that demons are afraid of. The only man that caused death sleep. The man that has gone beyond the limitations of matter and elements. He has gone beyond the limitation of space and time. Life and death does not limit him. He definitely has answers to your body. The man that can die and come out of death. The man that can travel within space and time is the only one that can help, help you. Outside space, he exists. Before time, he has been. We have a body bearer. His name is Jesus. Come to Jesus tonight. Run to Jesus tonight. Every trouble will go from your life. Jesus promised to give you rest if you come to him. All those who came to him, they received their rest. And he's calling you, come and take my yoke. Come and learn from me. You will find rest for your soul. Let me explain to you. Jesus Christ, on one occasion, went to his disciples on water. In St. John's Gospel, Chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. They were about to be drowned. He walked on water. He got into the ship with them. St. John chapter 6, verse 16 to 21. As soon as he stepped into the boat, the boat covered four and a half kilometers in less than a second. The storm that was raging was left behind. Who is this man? that can traverse time and space. Matter does not stop him. How did he make it? Because he is the Lord of creation. No man, no man can do that. In St. John chapter 8, verse 56 to 58, Jesus told the Jews, he said, before Abraham was, I am. That means, I have been before time and I shall continue after time. What about death? He went to the grave of Lazarus in St. John chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. He told Martha, I am the resurrection and life. Martha did not believe. Then he got to the grave from verse 38 to 45. He said, roll the stone. They were arguing. He said, come and roll the stone. And when they rolled the stone, a man that had been dead four days and nights in the grave, he called his name. His voice resonated through space and time. Beyond time, beyond matter, went into the grave, into the place of the dead. And Lazarus came out alive. As if he had never been sick, as if he had never died, with no sign of decay or corruption. Somebody shout, Jesus! He took our place to give us his place. You and I have sinned, and the wages of sin is death. Eternal condemnation in hell. But Jesus said, if I allow these people to die, they will be hopeless eternally. 
I will pay the price of death for them. So he came to pay the price. He agreed to die for us. After he paid, he went to the cross. They nailed him to the tree. Only Jesus in human history ever agreed to die and said how he will come out from the dead. He knew pain and affliction because of us. He knew sorrow firsthand when he was betrayed and humiliated. He knew shame firsthand when he was stripped naked and mocked. He knew rejection firsthand when he was denied. And even the father turned from him and he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. He knew desolation because he was abandoned. He knew poverty. He knew death firsthand because he gave up the ghost. But he triumphed. He conquered death. He rose from the dead. Today, the first thing you need for your Lord to be taken away is mercy. Everybody shout mercy. Shout it again. Shout it again. Mercy is for those who know they are guilty and they are to be punished. But they don't want to be punished. Which means another person has to take the punishment for them so that they will not be punished. How many of you do not want to be punished for your sin? You know you are a sinner but you don't want to be punished for it. Are you sure? Somebody has to pay the price. That's what Jesus did. Grace is for someone who is not qualified. And then they qualify him. Someone else who qualified was disqualified. That the unqualified may be qualified. So Jesus decided to drop his qualification for you. And you have no qualification to stand before God. And he says, take my qualification. I take your disqualification. If you will allow Jesus to do that for you tonight, I assure you, you will go home without a burden. So it is time to bring our burden to the burden bearer. How many of us are ready to bring our fear and our sorrow and our trouble to Jesus? Can I see your hand? Step number one, change your mind. That means the way you used to think before, stop it. All the wrong things that brought you, brought you trouble, change your mind, I won't do them again. Number two, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He had no sin, but he chose to die. So that we will not die. Believe him. Step number three. Decide that you will follow him. Because he said, take my yoke upon you and learn. That for the rest of your life, you will follow him. And step number four. Stop worrying now. The Lord said, I should tell somebody here. That you have been so worried about your problem. That you are making it difficult for him to take it from you. Every time you are worrying, you are holding firm to your problem. What then should you do? Jesus said, I'm taking it tonight. Jesus said, He will take your trouble tonight. He will take your sorrow tonight. He will take your poverty tonight. He will take your pains tonight. He will take your shame tonight. But you must stop worrying about it. So, what are you to do? Start. Praising him. When Abraham stopped worrying about childbearing and started praising God, Sarah got pregnant. When Hannah stopped worrying and started thanking God, she got pregnant. When Joseph had stopped fearing and he started praising God, he got victory. Victory does not come for people who are worried. Breakthrough does not come for those who are worried. It is only those who trust God enough and they begin to thank God when there is no sign or evidence. So, if you are ready to drop your body, your sorrows and fears, your worry and anxiety, 
your sickness and disease all the causes and demonic loads all the bad habits all the shame you are ready to drop them tonight i will call you to come to the altar and when you are coming come with that problem come and drop it here at the altar so if you want to come now i will ask you to start coming you will not go home with any load in the name of jesus you will not go home with the sorrow you brought here in the name of jesus you will not go home with the crisis you brought here so if you know you are ready to drop your body i want to ask you right now to stand up and to start coming come and hand over that trouble to jesus that habit that pain that disgrace if you are coming start coming quickly because i'm going to pray for you at this altar you you are going to drop it at this altar you are ready to hand over your body to him jesus said come unto me he took the body from the ten lepers he took the body from all the sick people he took the body the shame he took it from them if you are coming come now i'm going to count one to ten for you to start coming one and come quickly come with the load two please if you are able to run and you are young run start coming now three it is time to drop your body at the altar it is time to bring your load here now three if you are coming come quickly four there is somebody who is ready to die for you he has already died there is somebody who is ready to collect your problem he is waiting for you at the altar he wants to take over your failure he wants to take over your shame he wants to take over your disappointment he wants to take over that madness he wants to take over that pain five please come quickly come quickly if you are coming begin to come because the body bearer is here tonight i can see you coming i will extend the number i'm waiting for you i repeat five please come quickly he is taking over the body from you tonight i say he's taking it over the man that could call the dead out of the grave after four days he can bear your body there's no body too difficult for him to bear just keep on coming with your fear with your worry with your anxiety with your sorrows with your pain with your shame just come just come just come just keep on coming thank you keep on coming keep on coming and as you come begin to tell him jesus this is the load oh i'm not going back with this load i am tired of failure i am tired of pain i'm tired of disappointment i am tired of causes i'm tired of sickness i'm tired of disease i am tired of affliction i am tired i am tired i am tired come and take it from me six please come quickly i'm waiting the gate is open the gate is open keep coming keep coming the gate is open the body bearer is waiting for you i see you coming i see you coming seven don't stop coming i know you are coming from far don't stop coming don't stop coming keep coming come and drop the load and as you arrive here begin to say jesus this is my load this is my load i'm not going home with you jesus take it away from me take it off me tonight this is my night this night i'm dropping every load eight please keep coming i see you coming i'm not going to stop i'm waiting for you i'm waiting for you i'm waiting for you the man that died 
that you may live is here waiting for you his name is jesus his name is jesus his name is jesus he died he died just keep coming keep coming oh de barona yatora i see you coming i'm waiting i'm waiting just keep coming i am giving you an extension because i still see some of you from very far mendro kakayabana there's a fire at this altar the fire is consuming sickness and disease there's a fire on this altar it's consuming every load and every sorrow and shame please keep coming keep coming don't turn back just keep coming keep coming and as you come, begin to say, Jesus, I hand over my load. I hand over all those bad habits. Gambling, sexual indulgence, lying, cheating. I hand them over. Yes, pain, incurable sickness, incurable disease, shame, lack, begging, borrowing. I hand them over. Keep coming. I see you from my right. A lot of you are coming from far. Please keep coming. Don't go back. Keep coming. And as you are coming, be saying, Jesus, this is my load. 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 Take this load, O oh Lord. Take this load, O oh Lord. Rock of Ages, clear for me.
I see you coming. Just keep coming. And as you are coming, and those of you who are here, listen to me now. Amen. Those of you who are praying in front, in Jesus' name, amen. Now say after me. And those of you who are still coming, say after me, my Lord and my God. Thank you for sending Jesus to take over my load. Today, I believe with all my heart that it was for me that Jesus suffered and died. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for suffering on my behalf. I hand over all my load, my sin and my problems, my shame and my sorrow, my failure and my disappointment. Take it from me. I believe your word where you promised to take over all my load. Thank you for taking the load. From now, I will not worry again because you have taken my load. I will start praising you because I will have rest from now. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that you died and rose from the dead. You are alive forevermore. I confess that you are my Lord. And I receive forgiveness for all my sins. I also receive the gift of eternal life. And the power to become a child of God. Thank you Jesus for saving my soul. Thank you everlasting father for sending Jesus to pay for my price and to save my soul. Thank you father in Jesus name. Amen. Now place your hands on your head as I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven you. In the name of Jesus. The power of the devil over your life is destroyed today. In the name of Jesus. The yoke of Satan over your life is destroyed today. In the name of Jesus, the burden on your life is removed now. The demons, their yokes are broken now. The yoke of the curses are destroyed now. I speak to every sickness, every sorrow, every pain, every shame to separate from you now. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven you. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Go and be victorious. Go and enjoy your rest. Everything the enemy stole from you, I command it to be restored in the name of Jesus. Everything Satan planted in your life, I command it to be uprooted now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, the last step, you stop worrying and you start thanking God. So take one minute and say, Father, I thank you. This problem is over. This trouble is over. This trouble is over. It is over. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I won't see it again. I won't see it again. I won't see it again. Now, don't go anywhere yet. Please, we are, stay where you are. The officers are around you. They are going to attend to you. Sir, I think the officers are inadequate. I don't know what help the ministers can render. Please, please, let us attend to them. Daddy will want all your names. They will want to continue to pray for you. Please. Please 
I don't know how we shall attend to them. I can see that most of the ushers are just to one side. I don't understand. Please make sure you write your names, get all your documents, and the Lord will establish you. Let's give the Lord a round of applause.